to my channel. My name is Joanne and I am a third year undergrad student. I'm majoring in public health and today I'm going to give you my guide on how to get a 4.0. I've gone through five semesters of college and I was able to get a 4.0 in about three or four of them and I wanted to kind of share my tips on how I did it and things that I think that could help you maybe if you're entering into college or maybe you're struggling in college right now. If you like this video while you're watching make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe as well and leave a comment if you can. And before I start this video, I do want to preface this by saying, given our current climate with the coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic, school has become very difficult. It's not easy what students have to go through during this pandemic. It wasn't even easy in the first place. And then adding a pandemic, people are going through things. So if your grades are struggling, just understand that given the circumstances, you're doing what you can. And if you can't get a 4.0, that is totally okay as well. Also, I do want to say that getting a 4.0 is dependent on a lot of things. It could depend on your extenuating circumstances. Maybe you're working full time. Maybe you have little siblings you have to take care of. Maybe you're involved in extracurricular activities that kind of require more attention, which leaves less attention for school. Also, your major has a lot to do with it. Someone who's majoring in engineering versus someone who's majoring in general studies, the workload is going to be a lot different. There are majors that are notoriously very, very, very difficult. And so if you can get a 3.7 as an engineering major or a bio major. To me, that's like a 4.0. So just make sure to keep all of this in mind. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into the video. So the first tip I have to getting a 4.0 is to plan ahead. So we see how unexpected life is even with this pandemic, but there are also a lot of things that you can go through aside from the pandemic, like the daily hassles you have. A lot of things can get in the way, so you wanna make sure that you are planning ahead. Something that I recommend to everyone is to get a planner. This this is my planner right here. I got this from Target. It cost maybe $11. I live by this planner. I don't think I could get a 4.0 without a planner, honestly, because this is something that holds you accountable and it allows you to plan ahead. So this planner book has a monthly planner. It also has daily planners and weekly planners, and it also has to-do lists, things you shouldn't forget, things you have to do. It, I mean, it includes a lot that helps me stay on top of stuff and allows me to plan ahead so I get stuff done. Also in terms of planning ahead, a lot of the times if you think that you're on schedule, more times than not, you're probably going to run behind. So if you know that you have something due on Friday, instead of doing it on Thursday or Wednesday, try to finish it on Tuesday. This gives you cushion. Let's say if you don't understand something or you need extra help, you have the time to do it instead of trying to email your teacher on Thursday night, trying to figure out how to do this assignment. Not only that, but it gives you a lot more time to do other stuff towards the end of the weekend. These are just examples of how you can think to plan ahead. All right, so now we're gonna start focusing on the actual semester itself. My second tip to getting a 4.0 is to use your resources. Most especially, I'm going to to say Rate My Professors is one of the most useful resources that I've used in college. Rate My Professors allows you to search up professors in your school and allows you to see what previous students say about that specific teacher. If the teacher is bad, you're going to know. They're going to have a very low rating and they're going to have a very high rating of difficulty. I will never ever register for a course if I know that the teacher has a low rating. That can make the difference between a 4.0 and a 3.5. If your teachers make your life miserable or they have the hardest exams, you can get all of that information from Rate My Professors. Another resource that you can use is Quizlet. Quizlet is a great resource for studying. It's a great resource for getting answers as well that can help you in learning the material. Another resource you can use is to maybe ask your teachers for a previous test that she's given to other students in her previous classes. If you can see the way that your teacher asks questions on a test, you'll better be able to gauge how you should study. Of course, you can study the textbook and the lecture slides, but if you don't know how the question's gonna be asked, it's gonna be a little bit harder to know how you should study. Other resources you can use are office hours. If you're struggling on something, make sure to go to your teacher's office hours if he or she has that available to you. The third tip I have to getting a 4.0 is to read your syllabus. Your syllabus is going to be your best friend during the semester. So this is a rule of thumb. In the beginning of the semester, when you're getting your syllabi, make sure to go through 
through and look at all the assignments that are due and make sure to record them into your planner for the entire semester. So this is my planner for the month of September and I did this all throughout the months of September, October, November, and December. All of this was written way before the semester even started. And as the days go by, I know what assignments I have to do, what to do in the coming weeks, and then as I get them done, I can cross them off. Your syllabus will also tell you how your teacher likes to grade. Some teachers consider a 94% an A. Some teachers consider a 93% an A, which is all information that's given inside the syllabus. The teacher also includes information like their, their late policy, whether they will accept late work or whether they have extensions. They will also include whether they will provide extra credit. So all of this information kind of helps you to know like, okay, is this a teacher that I can be a little more chill around? or is this something that I really have to be on top of all the time? So the fourth tip I have to getting a 4.0 is to go to class. This may seem like a given to a lot of people, but a lot of people don't go to class, maybe because the class is too early and they're too lazy or whatever reason it would be. But I think that going to class, I feel like it helps you get into that schedule and it in the classroom setting helps you get into the study mood. It helps you when you're learning, not only that, but if you have questions and you're in a class, you can ask them right then and there. I think going to class is also helpful because sometimes teachers will give information in class that you won't see in the textbook. Sometimes they'll drop little gems like, oh, maybe Make sure to focus on this for the test. So that is all stuff that you can miss if you don't show up to class. All right, so my fifth tip to getting a 4.0 is not only to show up to class, but to actually pay attention in class. You should be actively trying to learn in class by participating and asking questions if you don't understand something. Actually try to use that designated 40 minutes to an hour or two hours to strictly focus on that subject. I think we have a lot of free time outside of the classroom that you can use to zone off or go to sleep or use your phone. But when you're in class, I I think you should take that very seriously. Try to grasp as much as you can inside the classroom setting because when you go home, you're gonna be alone. You're not gonna have the resources there to help you. All right, so my sixth tip to getting a 4.0 is to make sure to get help early on in the semester. It serves you nothing to wait until a week before the finals to try to address something that was a problem in the second week of the semester. If you're having a problem with something, address it then and there. Don't wait until the material shows up later because nine times out of ten it's gonna show up later i did this to myself i remember in organic chemistry we were learning resonance structures and i could not get it for the life of me and i was like you know what i don't care because after this unit we're not going to need this anymore i was very mistaken because resonance structures showed up for the rest of the semester and I was trying to catch up with resonance structures while trying to learn the new stuff. So I think in order to mitigate those stresses that can show up later in the semester, make sure that you 100% grasp the information while it's while you're working on it in class don't wait till a week or two later to finally get help seek help as early as you can all right so my seventh tip to getting a 4.0 is to actually do the work it's funny because in high school i would do my work sometimes and then other times i wouldn't and i would be so shocked when my grade dropped like yeah if you're turning in your homework late or you're turning in assignments late or not turning them at all your grade is gonna drop you're not gonna get an a if you have missing assignments i've actually been in class for three years and i've never missed one assignment and I can attribute a lot of my 4.0 to me never missing an assignment so you want to make sure that you actually do your assignments your homework your study sets whatever it is that will help you prepare especially if it's graded you want to make sure that you do it try to do beyond that because getting a 4.0 it's not something that you can get if you do the minimum so you want to go above and beyond you want to do extra practice problems when you can you want to study the book in and out so you actually want to actually put in the work to get what you want so my eighth tip to getting a 4.0 is to learn how you study best i can't tell you how much this is so important because everyone is different nobody exists in a vacuum and because of that one way that I could that could help me study so well probably wouldn't help you because you're not me and I'm not you. A lot of my friends can study by constantly rewriting stuff. I don't know how people do that. I actually have to try different ways. I'm not really a visual learner. I'm more of an auditory learner. So figure out what works best in your case and always be willing to adopt the way that you learn to the material you're learning. So the way that you study in chemistry probably won't be the same way you study in anatomy because chemistry is more 
math focus when you're using formulas. Whereas in anatomy, you're using more visual learning and you're using more clinically applicable skills. So my ninth tip that kind of ties along with what I just said is to make sure that you're using evidence-based study techniques. Evidence-based study techniques are techniques that have been proven to work through research. Examples of this could be the Pomodoro technique, using algorithmic flashcards that you make on your own, using active learning and active studying skills, like synthesizing information into your own words and into a way that you understand. A lot of the time when we're in class or when we're watching lectures, we kind of take what the teacher is saying and we write it down and then we try to memorize that. How about instead trying to take what the teacher says, put it into your own words, synthesize the information into a way that you understand it. Another thing you can do is try to teach other people your material and if you're able to effectively teach someone else what you're studying and what you're learning, that probably means that you know the material. So for example, if you're taking biology 101, if you need to know the crab cycle, try to to explain the Krebs cycle to your mom or your brother or your sister or your boyfriend or your husband, whatever. And if you can adequately and efficiently explain what the Krebs cycle is, how it works, that probably means you know it. If you are struggling to explain it or you can't really put the words together, that probably means that you need more help with that. And that's a way that you can use active learning to your advantage. Don't just rewrite stuff. Try to recite it if it's possible. Try to rehearse it. Always visit the information. These are all evidence based study techniques that you can use that will help you in the classroom. So my 10th tip to getting a 4.0 is to have your priorities straight. So you have to know how important your grades are and how much you want a 4.0 from the beginning of the semester. And you have to keep that in mind throughout the entire semester. When you have your priorities straight, you know that, okay, if I have a test tomorrow and my boyfriend wants to go out with me tonight, he's gonna have to wait. Don't compromise your priorities for pleasure. Because at the end of the day, if you want a 4.0, you should be willing to put in the work to get that 4.0. Another example of straightening out your priorities is let's say you're working working a part-time job in order to pay bills for school and your apartment. All right, so this is something that's a necessity. You need this job and you need school. So you need to figure out how to put those two together without compromising either of them. If you are working for leisurely or you're working for pocket money or you don't really need to be working and you know that your school is way more important, if work is affecting school, how about quitting your job or taking a leave of absence because you know your priorities. Like, okay, school is most important to me. To me, I work full time and then I volunteer part-time. School is the most important thing to me. If my grades start dropping, I swear on everything I'm quitting my job. Like I'm not going to compromise my grades for money. If something were to start getting compromised, I would drop anything that doesn't have to do with school just because my priority is school. My next piece of advice to getting a 4.0 is to start off strong. It's better to start off strong in the beginning to give yourself room to mess up later in the semester than to bomb your first exam or your first quiz. It's easier trying to maintain a good grade than trying to work your way from the bottom after you failed. And I feel like this is a given, but you also want to make sure that you're implementing a plan so that you start off strong. Your first test, you don't know what is gonna show up on that test. So you need to go into overdrive when you're studying. You need to study over and above what you need to know to ace the exam. All right, and my last tip in my guide to getting a 4.0 is just remembering that getting good grades is not as important as understanding the material. A lot of the times they work hand in hand, but instead of focusing on the grade, try to focus more on actually understanding what you're learning. And once you understand as much as you can, when you're faced with that information on a test or a quiz, you're able to ace it because you understand it. So instead of focusing on the grade, try to focus more on the content. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I know this was a long one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I, I can't thank you guys enough for watching. If you made it this far, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And I wish you the best in your spring 2021 semester. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.